Well, this is the host, the hostess where we're going to dry poultry farm hops, which was built by T and G Euler in 1895. And Eulers used to live at Pattenden Manor on Pattenden Farm, Great Pattenden Farm. So we'll just have a walk along here. These are our three drying units, which was put in by Drayton Fletcher's in 1963. Before these, there was other oil burners, and before those, there was they was dried by coal fires. The other oil burners were around the front. These are known as pusher. These have got pusher fans in them, which means that the hot air is pushed up through the ops. The oil burners before that was had puller fans, which meant there was a big fan up in the kiln which pulled the hot air up through. So we just go along to the front and point out where they were. Now where each of these three doorways are into the bottom of the kilns, that's where the, um, the, the older oil burners were and before that the coal fires. And each side of, when the coal fires were there, each side of that door was another door, so you could go each side of the fire to make it up with uh, Welsh agrocyte coal. The, um, the coal fire had a canopy over it, so it dispersed the e evenly in, in, in the kiln itself. Now up until 1980, we used to burn uh, brimstone, which how the cut out the colour of the hops, and here we have a, a brimstone pan somewhere. This is a brimstone pan, and we'd probably put five of those in a kiln, and for each load we will put in about 15 kilos of, of brimstone. The method of lighting that was you put your, put your brimstone, the sticks of brimstone in there with a little bit of methylated spirit and you just drop a match in there and hopefully it didn't go out. If it went out you had to go back in there to relight it. Above each doorway more or less is the uh, temperature gauge which tells you um, what temperature your, your kiln is and when you start drying for the first two hours you dry at 120 degrees Fahrenheit and then for about six hours after that is 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Okay. We're now inside the bottom of the kiln underneath a slatted floor. This is where the heat comes in. Um, it's a bit dark in here at the moment, no lighting and the, the hot air will be pushed out by a fan from the back uh, oil plant at the back and we'll go up through the slatted floor to dry the hops. This is called the pocket room floor. This is where all the full, full pockets, when they've been pressed, are usually stored in here. But as you can see, because we don't grow many ops now, the furniture seems to have taken over. The shuttering up at the louvers and the windows were made for a blackout during the war. Number seven and number eight are, are blocking the light out of the window. Number six is over a louver. And number four and number three are not over the window. This is called a webbing and you suspend the pocket in this while pressing to take the take the pressure off uh, what the hoop which the pocket is, is put on upstairs. Mm. 
We are now in the cooling room floor, which is the floor where when the hops are cooked, they're pulled out in a lump between these two presses, which will be tomorrow morning. This is a slatted floor with a horse hair. This is a hair made out of horse hair on top of the slatted floor. And these, which are probably made of polyester or something, I don't know quite what they're made of, a nylon, but they used to be made of goat's hair. And they're called lifter cloths. And there's six of these in this kiln. So when the ops are dried, we can pull the, pull the dried ops out on a lifter cloth and tip out on the cooling room floor. This kiln was struck by lightning in 1967, I believe it was. And it, on the outside, it took a row of tiles off right down the outside, and all the plaster fell off on the inside. Cows, that's the white piece on the top, they stand about 12 foot tall. And they're nailed together with copper nails because when we used to use a brimstone, it would corrode a, an iron nail or a, a steel nail. So everything's made with bra, uh, copper nails. The opening in the back is where the puller fan used to be. Um, as I explained earlier, that that used to pull the hot air up, whereas now it pushes it up. So there was, used to be a big fan in there with a, a canvas pulley belt used to run down to a shaft downstairs. When this was, when the modern oil burners were put in, you could put a bigger load on, and therefore uh, to get the reek off, you have to have enough ventilation, so that has been made into a vent where that fan used to be and also it goes out the top, out through the cow. And here are the hops arriving now from the hop picking shed, ready for loading into the, into the kilns. This is the last of the 2007 crop. The picking teams come down with us to give us a hand loading. When we had 50 acres, there'd have been four loads a day of these coming down. Now there's one. Okay, shall I give her a shout and we'll whisk yeah, these up? Yeah. We've got a, a full team. And then yeah, we'll, do that well as long as we get them in, we can tip most of them and then keep a few yeah, back. Yeah, I would if I were yeah. um, But they're all the same anyway. Yeah, it's all, yeah. all right, yeah. that's brilliant. Goody, goody. Again, historically, the hops would have been hoisted up on a winch up into the uh, up to the top floor. Um, now, thanks to I suspect health and safety, we do it using a different system where they're placed on a pile of pallets and lifted up on a forklift, so that if anything falls, everybody's under cover. Nothing can fall on anybody. You can see why it's um, to have those bows tied up properly in there. You heave those, heave the pokes onto there, and the bow comes undone. You very quickly get 50 pounds worth of hops thrown all over the floor. Mm -hmm. 
team in the ace house then pull the hops into into the uh, onto the kiln onto the, onto the top floor and they carry it into the kilns. The idea is to put the hops in in rows as far as possible to end up with a reasonably even layer on the floor. It makes the levelling process that will take place next an awful lot easier for the dryer. How old is this house now, Trevor? How old? Yeah, 1895. Oh, it's nearly as old as me. I
Here I'm uh, levelling the kiln of hops, uh, which have to be as level as you can get them so they dry nice and evenly. And when I finish levelling, there should be about in between 850 and 900 bushel. The lifter cloths you can see around the outside are let down after the, it's levelled so it disperses any air pockets. If the, if the lifter cloth is not at right angles with the wall and the floor. When I finish levelling this, the furnace will be lit up to start the drying procedure about 9, it's now 12.30pm. This will be lit, uh, start drying at 9pm tonight. First two hours being on 120 degrees Fahrenheit and then about another six to seven hours at 140 degrees Fahrenheit and they'll be ready to come off in the morning when they're dry.